Look, uh, oh, uh, shouts out to Arsenal Maniac. Uh, yeah, brother, I seen what you said, and I shot right over there to BT Sports, and I watched it, man. And, oh, my God. Boxing is horrible, man. It really is, man. But let me go ahead and get into this, man. So I went on BT Sports, and I watched the, the corner cam of Buddy McGirt and uh, Anthony Yard's trainer. Um, what's his name? Donde? Tunde, Tunde, my bad, my bad, Tunde. And man, the stuff that I heard in that corner, I would swear we was on the movie set because it couldn't be real life. It couldn't be real life. Tunde gave that man false hopes and no answers. I'm going to say it again. Tunde gave Anthony Yard false hope with no answers. OK, he didn't tell him where he really was in the fight. OK, and he didn't provide no solutions to the problems and the equations. That Kovalov was putting in front of Anthony Yard, the very first thing in super basic, super basic. The very first thing Tunde could have did was tell Anthony Yard, very simple, get your head off the line because what was tearing up Anthony Yard? It wasn't Kovalov's right hand. It was his jab. What did he get knocked out with? A jab. I seen Anthony Yard take some of the hardest stiff jabs to the face I've seen in boxing. He took some clean, stiff-ass jabs to the face. Jabs was eating this man alive. It wouldn't have hurt Tunde to say, yo, Anthony, hey, um, could you get your head off line? You know what I'm saying? Very simple. Get your head offline, man. That alone would have carried you so far. Tony Harrison, tell y'all all the time, defense wins championships. He tells y'all all the time. Another thing that uh, Tunde could have told him is get your damn hands up. Okay? Get your hands up. And didn't Anthony Yard, he gassed out, right? The younger fighter got more tired than the older fighter, right? Okay. Let me tell you guys something, a little secret. Well, it's not even a little secret about boxing. Maybe this is some lost hidden knowledge. I don't know because what's going on in today's boxing gyms, no sparring, uh, fighting guys eight days out until you fight. It ain't no telling. But a good defense helps preserve your stamina. Let me say that again. Good defense helps preserve your stamina. I'm going to let you go do the homework and figure out why that is. I shouldn't have to break everything down for everybody on this channel. You guys actually get a whole lot of game if you pay attention. But good defense helps preserve your stamina, okay? So off jump, by simply telling him to keep his hands up and get his head offline, that would have helped two of the major factors that went on in that fight. Him eating them jabs and him gassing out. Okay? That would have took care of that. Okay? The other thing that man could have told him is, Anthony, you got to let your right hand go. Okay? You got to sit down on some of them punches. Okay? Why are you reluctant to throw your right hand? Okay? Go back and watch the fight. He's reluctant as hell to throw his right hand. And why? When you have the capability of three and four and five punch combinations, why are you just throwing one and two shots at a time? That's another thing that I see in these new eras of boxing. Is combinations becoming rare or something? For real, combinations is becoming like feints in boxing. You know what I'm saying? You notice that a lot of boxers don't faint anymore. A feint is one of the most powerful. I put a feint right next to a jab. That's how powerful it is. And that's how good of a tool it is. Yet, don't nobody use feints. You know what I'm saying? Anthony Joshua could use feints in his style. It would help him out a lot, but people don't faint anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I don't get it. It's just like parrying. People really don't know how to parry no more. See, the old school boxing knowledge is dying. You can tell. By the boxers that are being produced and the people that are training them. 
We just don't need to get on the boxes. We need to get on these trainers. Come on, man. What Tunde did to Anthony Yard in that corner was horrible. That was a disservice. That was a disservice. Just two simple things that he could have told him. That would have carried him through that fight. You know, and a lot of people were telling me, well, you know, because I did my other video on Anthony Yard, and a lot of people tell me, well, you know, Anthony Yards need to be proud of himself, and he needs to be this, or you know that. I like look. I give Anthony Yard his credit for going over there and rushing to fight him. If 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 you go back and listen to the video, I clearly say that in the video. That's not what I'm saying. I said in that video, Anthony Yard has more problems than what people are presenting on the table. He almost is at the point of no return. I said that in the last video. He's at the point of no return. OK, because what he's now discovering is he's been been trained wrong this entire time. He has now discovered that he is not on the elite level. And this is what I mean by this. OK, so he lost the Kovalov, right? Tell me what other, if any, what other elite fighter do you think Anthony Yard could actually fight and defeat? I wait. Who? I'm talking about an elite fighter. Anthony Yard is going to have to go back to fighting the Uber drivers and the pizza delivery mans that he's been fighting up until Sergey Kovalov. What, you think he's going to take another top-level fight? No, he's not. And he's not going to... The style that they program into Anthony Yard is not sustainable on an elite level. It is not. I don't care what you say. It is not. He can't compete on an elite level with that style and that kind of coaching. He cannot. So that's why I say Anthony Yard is all but really finished. Because what he has to do, I seriously doubt he would do. And pay close attention to this. Because this is going to be the prime example of sticking with somebody over Choosing loyalty over experience. This is what you get. All right, so pay close attention. So I hope Anthony Joshua is paying attention to Anthony Yard. Anthony Yard ain't going to drop, uh, he not going to drop Tunde. He not. We all know he not. He ain't going to switch nothing. He's going to keep that. Okay? Because of the loyalty, because of the be, be because of the history, because of the family thing, because of the, the whole thing. He's not going to change up, and he's going to suffer for that. So that's why I said Anthony Yard's got bigger problems than what people are actually presenting to you. This man career, in all actuality, in hindsight, stick a fork in him. This kid is done. I know people are thinking like, man, that's a hell of a thing for you to say. Mark my words on this. Mark my word, because what he has to do to advance forward, he's not going to do it. He's not, especially when you got a coach that said, I don't think Anthony Yard did anything wrong in that fight. He didn't do himself a disservice. He should actually be proud of himself. I actually feel different. The props that y'all give him for going inside that ring is the props that I give him for just going to Russia to fight. But as far as inside of that ring goes, no, that was a hella drop off from what people were expecting and hoping and thought you were. That was a hell of a drop off. OK, that was a hell man. The way Anthony Yard ate jabs, man, come on, man. You know the saying about the jab. You know what I'm saying? The jab is the most important punch in boxing because you can win a fight. With just your jab. <laughs> Is that Laura let you know that? Cuban fighters let you know that. And the most important punch in boxing, this dude could not evade. He couldn't shake it. He couldn't slip it. He couldn't do anything with it. He couldn't block it. He couldn't parry it. There was not, he had no answer for that jab the entire fight. Tell me one time that Tunde had a Answer for him about Kovalov's jab. I will wait. Then he has him walking back. Saying, oh, go, good job, good job. We got him, we got him. And then he does something that makes no sense. 
he tells Anthony Yard to empty his tank on Kovalov. Who tells you to empty your tank when, what round was that when he told him? He at least had three or four rounds left when he told him that. I'm not even sure what round he told him that. You don't empty your tank uh, mid-fight? What the hell is wrong with you? This is why he couldn't finish the job. Because when he emptied his tank on Kovalov, he emptied his damn gas tank. And he couldn't finish the job and Kovalov got right back into the fight. Okay? That's somebody who don't got no experience, okay, and does not need to be coaching anybody. That was a very stupid thing to tell him. You told him to empty his tank? So what is he supposed to preserve? You know what I'm saying? Kovalov ain't no uh, fly-by-night guy. He a veteran. He been in the, he's been in the swamp before. Has Anthony Yard? No, so why would you tell him that? That did not make no sense whatsoever. So as far as Anthony Yard, at this point, the kid is done. And if you don't believe me, in my comment section right now, you tell me what other elite level fighter you think he can fight and actually beat. Tell me. I, I want to know. Who? He has to go back. To fighting the Costco workers of the world. He has to go back and fighting the pool mans of the world. He has to go back to fighting the uh uh the the, the 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 fucking hedge cutters of the world. That's what he has to do now. And he has to ride his career out like that. See? Now, now you see why he's been cherry picking all this time. Hey, look, and it's been official. Because most people say it's a toss-up. It's been official. Anthony Yard, don't spar. Dude, you can't be in any combat anything and not spar. You can't. That was Bruce Lee's main problem with that touch point system karate shit. He said it's not based in reality. We really have to spar. He was the first one really sparring with his students and shit like that. He, he actually believed in sparring. And this is why all those dojo karate guys be getting their ass whooped. Because it's not a simulation of the real thing. How many times could you look on the internet and watch some, some kung fu master, some, um, some karate master get their ass whooped by a regular street fighting MMA dude? Because it doesn't mirror reality. You walked into a fight and did not spar. I don't know what to say about that. But one thing's for sure. What Anthony Yard needs to do to go forward, he will not do. And I know he won't do it. That's why I say, believe it or not, this kid is done. Y'all can say I'm crazy. You can say whatever you want. Trust me on this. He's done. That's too many years training that way. He's too acclimated. He's too jailed with his team. He's too, they ain't going to make the changes. Especially after the loss, your coach says, I don't think we did anything wrong. Okay, all right, cool, cool. Well, you go ahead then. Well, Anthony, it is now official. We all wanted to know if you were a bum or not. No, you are not a bum, Anthony Yard. You actually have potential. But the team that you have will not make you a household name or an elite fighter. All right? It just won't happen with that team. It is what it is, man. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Bruce Vane, I'm out.